Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wow, this is the day that God has made. And we all shall rejoice in this day and be glad. Amen. It is so good to have you again with us today on Facebook Live. God is good. We are still here. And we are still declaring the word of God. God is good in the midst of all of this. God is still good. Amen. I am co-pastor Dr. Bobby Daniels, the first lady of Woodbury Miracle Fellowship Center, along with our pastor, Bishop Thomas Daniel, which will be coming in a few minutes to preach to us the word of God today. And his sermon is today, God is in charge. God is in charge. No matter what's going on in the world today or, or in our lives, one thing we do know, that God is in charge. Thank God he's in charge. Everything is moving by the power of God. The only way things get better, God has to step in to make it better. God has to step in. The only way people get healed and delivered, God has to step in. In him we live, we move, and we have our being. God's plan and purpose for man will come to pass. Because if he said it, then you can count on it. Because he will do just what he said. Now, receive with me today our pastor, Bishop Thomas Daniel, to preach to us the word of God. God is in charge. Enjoy the message. Praise the Lord. So good to have you with us on today. God is good. God is so good. And we're grateful for his goodness and his mercy and his love toward us. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for loving us in spite of us. Yes. God, we pray that you hide us behind your glory, that the people may see you and not us. God, we thank you in advance for what you're about to do, going to do, and we give you all the glory for it and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. So grateful for you, amen, to be with us on today. Amen. We're dealing with the message from, amen, 1 Corinthians, amen, the 10th chapter, and looking at that 13th verse, 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, looking at, amen, the 13th verse. And it reads, there had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it again. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape. Amen. As, as we look at God, amen, as we look at God, God is a monarch. God is sovereign. God is self-sufficient. He doesn't need anybody else. He is sovereign. One rule. Amen. He's all powerful, all knowing. God is all seeing. And when we are born again, we're born, when we're born into this world, amen, we're born with our parents' DNA. Yes. Amen. We're born with, amen, that we act like our parents. We, we carry ourselves. That, that, that spirit of theirs is in us and, and we're similar. When I look in the mirror, I can see my granddad because I, as I get older, I look like him when he was uh, my age. And, and that's the DNA. We were born that way with certain characteristics about, amen, ourselves. Amen. But we all were born in sin. Yes. And we all were shaped in iniquity. So in order, amen, to spend eternity with God, we must be born again. We have to be born 
again, born of the water and born, amen, of the spirit. We have to be regenerated. We have to be changed. Our insight has to be changed. We keep our nature. We keep the human nature, but the spirit has to be changed from the inside and amen, networks, amen, on the outside. And when we accept Jesus, when we accept him and he comes into our lives, we become children of God. We become God's children. Yes. Amen. So God is, amen, control of our life. God is in control of our life. One of I say, no longer I, it's no longer I, but Christ that lives in me in the life which I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. So in other words, when we're born again, we lose the DNA that we were born with. And we pick on, we pick up the Spirit of God, the will of God, what God's will and purpose and plan for our lives. Yes. Amen. And and when God comes in, when, when 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 we're born and become children of God, then we have to yield our will over to God. We have to yield our lives mm -hmm. over to Him. And it's not our will any longer. But it's his will for our life, regardless of what our plans were, regardless of what we want to do for our lives and, and what we had set up. When God comes in, yes, now we have to find out what his purpose, his plan mm -hmm. for our lives. And if you want to be happy, amen, you'll follow his plan because his way is perfect. God's way is perfect. If you want to have a good life, let him take the wheel. Let him drive you. Let him, let him lead and guide you. He'll lead you into where you need to be, yes, when God. you need to be there. He will give you a great life. Yes. The difference is God allows tests and trials yes. to bring us into his plan for our lives. Mm -hmm. God allows Situations, situations and circumstances. A lot of times people get in the church, oh, just come on and God going to give you everything you need. He's going to bless you. He's going to do this. It comes with persecution. Yes. It comes with tests and trials. Last week, amen, Jesus said, come unto me. Are you that labor and a heavy laden? and I give you rest. Then he turned right around. I'm going to give you rest, but take my yoke on you. Yes. So in other words, the rest comes with a yoke. Serving God come. Somebody said, well, I thought salvation was free. It is. You're born again. All you got to do is ask him to come in. He'll come in. But from that point on, there has to be a change made. There has to be a certain part of sanctification. There has to be a setting aside so that you can please God and walk in the admonition of God. Amen. So, so uh, a good example is the Hebrew boys. Amen. The Hebrew boys, when, when, when they were comfortable where they were, but uh, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar took over and they went into bondage, mm. now he was telling them, you got to serve my God. Yes. My God is not your God. I don't even know who this God. You, you serve an invisible God. I have my God in the statue. And every day at a certain time, I want you to get up and bow down mm. to my God. Yes. So now they're in a different situation, in a different circumstance. It's like we were born again, we're in a different situation. Certain things we used to do, we can't do no more. Certain places we used to go, we can't go no more. Now we have to pattern our lives after God. Nebuchadnezzar was telling them, listen, you're going to bow down to my God. No, I'm going to put you in a fiery furnace. Yes. I'm going to put you in there and burn you up. They told him, said, listen, king. Oh, king, listen. Amen. The God that we serve, yeah. he's able mm -hmm. to deliver us. Yeah. And if he don't deliver us, we still will not bow mm -hmm. to your God. In other words, we're not going to bow. We're not going to bow. You can put us in and he may not come and deliver us. Mm -hmm. But if he don't, we will not 
bowed. When you become a Christian, you got to make up your mind. Certain places I will not go. Certain things I will not do. We have to take the Word of God, get in that Word of God, study the Word of God to show ourselves approved under God. A workman need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of truth. Every morning, you ought to get in that Word. It's our food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. If we want to know the will of God, if we want to know the plan of God for our life, we got to study his word. In his word is the fullness of joy. In his word, there's life. In his word, there's light. We got to read it. You can't wait on nobody to tell you about it all the time. You got to get it for yourself. He will reveal who he is to you. He will let you know his plans for your life. He didn't just call you. The Bible said, many are called, but few chosen. A lot of people come, but there are few people that he choose, amen, to, to be of service to him. And there's a direct plan for your life. You can have Jonah. Jo Jonah was told to go to Nineveh. He went to Tarsus. Mm -hmm. He went the other way. But God oh. got a hold of him yeah. through test and trial. And Jonah even confessed, throw me overboard. Yeah. I'd rather, if, if you throw me overboard, the ship can go on. You all can go on and be at peace. God is mad with me. God will not let him go until he went to Nineveh. Yeah. And when he got out, he went to Nineveh and the people repented. In other words, God's plan has to be fulfilled in our lives. And a part of the plan uh -huh. is suffering with him. Yeah. If you suffer with him, you can reign uh -huh. With the suffering part, the part of the tests, mm -hmm. the part of the trials of, of what we are uncomfortable with. And sometimes we want to give up and we want to quit because why would God allow this to come my way? Mm -hmm. Since you told me God loved me, preacher, since you told me his love was unconditional, why do I have to go through the things that I have to go through for God to be my father, for God to make me, for God, amen, to help me, for God to be there and encourage. Why do I have to wow. go through these things? Well, we learn obedience yeah. through the things that we suffer. We learn patience, patience through the things that we go through. We learn who God really is by waiting on him. And then we went and gave out of time and, and we done, our, our two weeks was over and he still hadn't showed up. We got to wait another two weeks. Amen. Why? Because you learn through the things that you go through of God's plan for your life. The object is to get you to where God wants you. The reason why he called you because maturity is knowing his will All for right. your life. Yeah. If we look at his son, his son knew that he came to die. Yeah. Even though he loved his disciples and even though he wanted to remain with them, he said, nevertheless, it's not what I want. I came to offer my life as a sacrifice mm -hmm. for humanity. And he was willing to do his father's will. If you're in the church today, amen. What is God's plan for your life? If you know him, what is he plan? What is he calling you to do? There's a calling on our lives. There's something that he would have us to do. And we got to be willing, amen, to do what he has called us to do. Let's look at Peter. Amen. Let's look at Peter, the first Peter five. Let's look at first Peter five. Amen. And, and looking at that, that 10th verse, first Peter five and 10. Amen. But the God of all grace who had called us into eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, yeah. God has called us into his eternal grace. Mm -hmm. He's called us by his son, Jesus. But he said that after you have suffered a while, yeah. he will make you. After you've suffered a while, he'll make you perfect. Mm -hmm. That term perfect means complete. Not only will he make you perfect, he will establish 
you, make you stable. He will strengthen you, make you strong. He will settle you, make you calm down. In other words, being born again is one thing. A child is born again, but they don't know how to walk. They don't know how to carry themselves. They don't know what to do. They need somebody to guide them. They need somebody to instruct them. They need somebody to help them to develop, amen, and to grow and mature in that life that they're living. And that's what God is able to do. The suffering, the, the pain of, of serving God. Amen. Not having our way all the time. Being uh, un under the control of the Holy Spirit. Al allowing God to lead and direct our life. Why must we do this? Why? Because God is in charge. Yes. He has special plans yes. for every one of us. And if we have our way, amen, we'll miss his will for our life. The songwriter said the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Neighbor, when you step in the will of God, it don't matter what you go through. You know some way, somehow, God going to provide. When you step into the will of God, when you know you're walking after God, you know you're serving God, you know you're in the plan of God, God will show you his glory. He will show you his power. God will open doors that can't nobody shut. And God will shut doors that can't nobody open. That's the God that we serve. But it comes with Suffering. It comes with pain. A lot of you wondering, I'm a child of God. Why am I going through this pandemic? Why am I suffering all of this? He reigned on the just as well as the unjust. God don't have no respect of a person. When you come to him, he is in charge. He is under control. You are under the control of him. It's no longer your will. You yield. To his will, you submit yourself under the hand of God. And in due time, he will exalt you. In due time, he'll tell you when to go. He'll, he sent Moses in Egypt. He allowed him to go to Egypt for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Then Moses had to walk away from all the riches of Pharaoh. Amen. To suffer the afflictions of his people. And then God put him in the desert for 40 more years. Amen. He had to learn, God, who God was, the goodness and the greatness of God. Then he sent him back. Amen. 40 years to deliver the children of Israel, to get them back. And Moses still, after 120 years, he still wasn't allowed to go in and enjoy the fruits of the land. But he served God. He was handpicked by God. And neighbor, if you know him, All right. you have been handpicked. He, many a call, but few are chosen. He chooses certain people to know him. There are millions of people that have been born, millions and millions and millions of people that have been born, yet hell has been enlarged. Yes. Simply because more people choose to have it that way. Yeah. Amen. To, to suffer, amen, with the people of God for a season, yeah. for a, a short time. You have to make a choice. You have to choose, do you want to serve him? Mm -hmm. You have to make a decision, do you want his will for your life to be carried out. Amen. Because eternity is at stake here. Yeah. Living with him forever is at stake with him. And, and when you decide to serve him, when you yeah. decide to walk in his way, his will for your life. Now you're talking about eternity forever with him. But if you choose the opposite way, you have to make that call. We're all free from all ages. Yeah. We're all free to decide which way we want to go. A mama can make you go to church. She can make you go to Sunday school. But it's going to come a day mama won't be around. you got to decide for yourself which way you will go, which, who you will choose. Will you choose God or will you choose to do it your way? And neighbor, God is in charge. May I take it a little deeper? I believe, this is my belief. You may not agree with it. But I believe this pandemic, God, I, I don't believe China did this. I don't believe no man is able to create a virus mm -hmm. that can affect the whole world. God mm -hmm. wanted to get, this is my opinion, God wanted to reach man because God was not satisfied 
with us. Not only man, but the church itself. And I believe that God has put us in the house for a reason. I believe that God has just changed all of our lives. Hallelujah. I believe he's, Hallelujah. he's that kind of God. I believe God has just stopped all of us yes. and, and caused all of us to look at things just a little bit different. In, in other words, amen, God put the children of Israel in the house and told them don't go out because death was in the street. And so now we're in the same situation. The death angels are taking numbers every day. The death angels are out in the street. And, and the only way we know to survive right now is to just save distance and put our mask on. Amen. Not to be around crowds and, 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 and wash our hands. Just simple things that we can do every day. That's the way it is with serving God. We got to watch what we do. Yeah. We got to watch how we conduct ourselves. Yeah. We got to watch how we serve one another. And then yeah. some people, some people in the church, amen, we hate people that don't like us. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. You cannot do that and please God. You have to follow peace yeah. with all men. Amen. Everybody you know, you should walk at peace with them. We don't have the right to hate nobody. We don't have the right to be jealous of nobody. We don't have the right to envy nobody. We don't have the right to cover what nobody else has when we serve God, we have limitations on us, what we can do and what we can't do. How you know those limitations? Got to get in the Word. All right. Study to show yourself approved under God. Why? Because God is in charge. We can pray all we want to and tell God, Lord, you move this virus. Lord, move this virus. Move this corona uh, virus. Lord, move it. God going to move it when he gets ready. Why? He is in charge. Mm. He is in charge. And what we got to do is we got to maintain. maintain. We got to hang in there. We got to, having done all to stand, yes. we got to keep standing. We got to keep praying for one another, yes. helping one another, serving. How do we serve our fellow man? By serving one another. You say, well, I'm, I'm helping people I don't even know. That's what love is. You know, when you love your family members, that, that's just family love. But when you love a neighbor, you see in the streets and they don't have no food and you go home and get some of your food out of your fridge and don't even know them and you supply their needs. That's the love of God. That's that agape love that God have. Amen. We, we are children of God. And our Father, our Father, our Heavenly Father, He has restrictions on us. We, he'll get mad in a minute. And you don't want God mad. He got mad with Solomon and Gomorrah and burned the city down. God is a good God. Yes, he but he is in charge. And neighbor, if he called you, you need to get busy yes. asking him, Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you need me for? Since he can't come down here. He did not rest in his son. Yeah. He did not rest in his word. Yeah. His word, 33 years, he was here. And now he's going back to be with the Father, yeah. making intercession for us. Now the Holy Spirit is here, operating in our hearts, yeah. operating in our spirit, operating in our mind, leading us yeah. to the Father, leading yeah. us to the day that he comes back and get us for those who want to be ready when he comes, there's going to come a day when it's going to be like this. But I don't believe this is the end. I believe that God got some more stuff. I believe that God has a plan. Yeah. But what he's doing, he's giving us just a little hint of how it's going to be when he get ready to come. My God. He's giving, the Bible says two are being dead. One will be taken. The other one left. Amen. Two will be working in the fields. One will be taken and the other one left. Everybody can't go. Everybody will not be able to get on the cloud. Somebody will be left. Somebody will be left. You have to choose. You have to make a choice. You have been called. You have been chosen. But you have to make the call. God will not force us to love him. God will not force us to serve him. He wants us to serve him freely. freely. 
He wants to serve him freely. And, and how he uh, divide the wheat and the tear. He said, let it grow up together. I'm going to divide it. What he'll do, he'll, he'll, he want to know who's, who's willing to serve him now. You can't wait till you get at the gate to say, I serve you. No, you got to serve him right now. You got to choose ye this day. The minute you hear his heart, his word, you got to make up your mind to choose him the day you hear his voice. You have to make a call. You have to make a decision to try him. Come. Amen. You, you're in the church and the devil is tempting you to do something. You have to resist. Mm -hmm. You have to resist the devil. And when you resist him, he'll flee from you. Let's look at our text. Mm -hmm. Let's go, amen, the first Corinthians, amen, that, 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 that 10th chapter and that, that 13th verse. First Corinthians 10 and 13, amen. Mm -hmm. They had no temptation taken you but such as is come yeah. to man but God is faithful yes. God is faithful God will stay with you he'll never leave you he'll be right there he'll help you get through any test right. a trial anything he yes, brings to you, he'll be right there with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. If you seek him, yeah. you're going to find him. Yeah. If you knock for him, he'll open up yeah. the door. If you ask him, he'll give it to you. Why? Yeah. Because God is faithful. Sometimes yeah. we have friends and we find them when they ain't going good, when they ain't going bad. We don't know where they are. But God is faithful. Yeah. God is Faithful. He will not suffer you. He will not allow you to be tempted above your capacity. He will not allow you to go through pain that you cannot bear. Right. He will not allow nothing to come your way that he has not prepared you individually for that you may be able that you may be able to bear. So what am I saying? There's no reason for a child of God to give up. There is no reason for a child of God to quit. Why? Because God is faithful. Yes. And God would not have brought you to it if he was not going to take you through it. You got to be willing to wait on him. You got to be willing to trust him and hang in there. Keep serving him. Why? Because he's strengthening you. There's power in the test. There's strength in the test. There's the building up in the test. He's making you to be, become a child that he can use for his glory. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Hallelujah. If you let that thing happen to you, you might as well wake up and say, God, for God I live and for God I die. I will serve the Lord until I die, like the old folks used to say. Amen. You got to make up your mind to serve. When our mind is made up, yeah. come what may. When all hell can break loose, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to serve him. I'm, I'm going to wait right here because I know he's going to show up. I know he loves me. He's never forsaken the righteous. So I know he's on my side. Amen. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will. Mm -hmm. Will the test. Somebody said, well, I don't want to bring it. No, no, no. It's coming. You got to grow. You got to develop. You got to mature. You got to make the choice. You got to say, yeah, mama can't make this for you. Dad can't make this for you. The, 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 the school superintendent can't make this for you. You got to make up your mind who you will serve. Will it be God or will it be Baal? You have to decide. You have to decide. Going back to the Hebrew boy. He said, well, King said, I'm going to put you in the front. He put him in. But when he put him in there, guess what? He went down and saw Four in there. He put in three. It was four in there. And he said the fourth of his life unto the Son of God. In other words, their trial and their test got him a promotion in bondage. Mm -hmm. My God, that's what God would do. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what people think about you. Worry about what God knows about you. And when you make up your mind, I'm going to serve God for better 
are for worse, God will flip the strip and God will give you a life that you never dreamed of in this world and in the world to come eternal life. And you can count on that. Why? Because God is faithful and he will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation, God will make you ain't gotta. You ain't gotta uh, uh, suck up to nobody. You ain't gotta. You ain't gotta uh, please no man. You ain't, you ain't gotta do nothing but trust in God. He said he'll make a way to escape. When Jesus was here, he looked at the sparrow. He said, "You know what, my father, he watched over the sparrow, and if he take care of the sparrows, he will definitely take care of you." Hallelujah. That's the God that we serve. Jesus came to tell us about our Father. Amen. And God is in charge. If he allowed his son to be beaten all night long, if he allowed his son who had committed no sin against the Father, if he allowed him to have the gift of his life and to sacrifice himself, Amen. You're going to have to make some sacrifice to serve God. Why? You got to go through some things. Yeah. Amen. The children of Israel complain in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Can God do it? Yeah. And God got angry with them. And God punched their neighbor. Amen. Whatever he allowed. Mm -hmm. Whatever God allowed. He will not put more on you than what you can deal with. He, he's able. I said, God is able. Yeah. He he controls everything. God is in charge of everything. You you kind of don't watch them for the stimulus. You waiting on the stimulus. God already got a plan. Yeah. How to bless you. You just got to trust him. Washington fussing. Washington fighting. The government is not on the government is on his son's shoulder. God is in charge. Mm -hmm. He got the whole world in his hands. He got you and me in his hands. Yeah. We have to submit to his will and say like his son Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. Nevertheless. nevertheless. Hallelujah. Lost my job. Nevertheless. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Been put out of school. Nevertheless. Hallelujah. Amen. Been put out of my home. Nevertheless. Don't have no food. Nevertheless. Though he slay me yet will I trust him and after Job went through all that God gave him double yes. you want a blessing to come your way I tell you the best way to get a blessing see somebody in need and help them. amen like the good Samaritan mm -hmm. he didn't have no business helping he didn't even know who he was the preacher walked by uh, another person walked by the, 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 the man just the, the good Samaritan just stopped Helped the man, picked him up, took him to a room, and gave him a room and told the man, if you need any more money, when I come back through, I pay. That's the man that God will bless. God called him to come by and make a point to meet that man, to help that person. God is calling you. There's somebody you got to help. There's somebody you got to reach. Somebody you got to witness to. Hey Amen. You, you think I want to be here or just preaching? I, I had plans for Hollywood mm -hmm. with that one day and don't want to go back no more. I'm not worried about Hollywood. I'm in the will of God for my life and I'm enjoying my trip to heaven on my way. I'm not looking back. I'm looking forward. I'm enjoying serving him day by day. You don't have a lot of friends. That's okay. That's okay. I have a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. I know him. He know me. Am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. But he know my heart. He know my mind. He know my spirit. He know my commitment. I have committed mm. to serve him for the balance of my life. And I, I'm growing. I'm developing. I'm still maturing. I've been there over 50, I've been in, I've been serving God over 50 years. I'm still growing. I'm still developing. I'm still learning. I'm still loving Him. This this pandemic for almost a year 
have caused me to love God in such a great way. Me and my wife, we just having a party at home. Amen. We just having a, my God, I ain't never, one of the members called and told us that I ain't never lived it good in my life. Because when you're at home serving God, when you, you know, a lot of the weight that I had when I was at, oh my God, oh my, I can just preach him and I, I get sweaty and don't have to run. At the church, I'm running all over the church. I'm tired. I have to change clothes when I get through. My God, I can just talk to you. I can just speak to you. I can tell you how great God is. And God is in charge. He is in, he is in control of everything. Dang, it's my with the devil, the devil. No, 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 no. The devil have to get permission from God. Because the devil is under the control of God. Yeah. And eventually, God's going to lock him up. He's going to chain him up. And eventually, he's going to put him in a hell, fire, and brimstone. He know his punishment. His punishment will not change. Neighbor, you can change yours right now. Yeah. You can change your narrative right now. You can change your direction right now. Surrender. Give up. Let go. Let go. Let go of the rope that you're holding on to. Let go of your life and accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Why? Because God is calling you softly and tenderly. Mm -hmm. Jesus it's calling you. He wants you to accept him. He will not tear it down. He will not break you down. And, and if he's got to make you serve him, that means you really don't love him. But when you love him enough, you'll surrender. You'll give over your life. And you say, Lord, any way you use me, I'll be satisfied. He's worth it. He's worth it. He's worth all the praise. He's worth all the honor. He's worth all the glory. God is worth it. Yeah. I wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. I wouldn't take nothing for serving God. Even in the midst of this pandemic, he is worth serving. Hallelujah. I invite you to allow me. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. As I pray for my brothers and my sisters, I pray for the people that don't know you. God, I pray that you touch their hearts right now. I pray that a word that I've said could penetrate their minds and their heart and cause them to surrender and say, Here am I, Lord. Mm -hmm. What would you have me to do? As Nicodemus said, Lord, I can't see how a man can go back into his mother's womb. It's not that way. He wants to come into your heart. And change you from the inside out. You got to let him in. You got to invite him to come in. And when he come in, he'll take a board and sup with you. He'll be your God and you can be his child, his people. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, thank you. for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. Touch every heart that's listening to me right now. Some that don't know which way to go. Some that don't know direction, Lord, lead them and guide them. Give them a word. Give them a word. That's, that's power in your word. Give them a word that can guide them into the next move. And God will thank you in advance for what you're doing and what you're about to do. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I'm so excited. Amen. Remember God is in charge. Amen. It's his responsibility to feed you. It's his responsibility to meet your need. It's his responsibility to help you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He, you have to make the call. You have to use your faith. You have to believe in him. But once you trust him, he'll come through. Amen, amen. I can keep going. But God is going to have for first lady Daniels and myself. Thanks for tuning in on today. And remember, God loves you. He really does. Until next week, be blessed and stay safe. Amen. Amen. God bless you as I pray.